Hi, welcome to the Danny Sankum Show and for another edition. Uh, basketball season just kicked off last weekend as the uh, men's basketball team played two games as well as our women's team played two, two games as well. A very busy weekend for Vulcan Athletics as we had nine sports teams in action. So I didn't get to catch a lot of the men's action, but took some, jotted down some notes. I hope Danny Sankum can fill us in a little more and I'd like to welcome in the coach again, Danny Sankum. Thank you for having me, glad to be here. Yeah, coach, I mean, Busy weekend, you head up to our new uh, PSAC member and Shepard, go head up to their gym. I mean, place that you've probably been a couple times. Done a great job, I like the court there and everything like that. They got the new PSAC logo on there, so a nice quick turnover there. Um, we'll just hop right into the game. I mean, what a, what a battle here. Uh, in game one, we played Bowie State there, came down to two points. I mean, I mean, talk about a game that had 10 lead changes and uh, nine ties. Yeah, we were right there. You know, Bowie is uh, uh, nine seniors on their team and uh, uh, the uh, preseason poll uh, favors to win the uh, CIAA. Uh, we played well. Uh, we had a chance to win the game uh, on the last possession. Um, you know, just uh, our, our youth and uh, our mistakes. Uh, you know, it, it's frustrating. You know, we felt like both games uh, we beat ourselves. Uh, we turned the ball over uh, 20 plus times against Bowie, which really, really hurt us. And uh, we weren't sound with defensive rotations, and we gave them too many clean looks, and they ended up shooting a pretty high percentage from the floor. So, uh, uh, all in all, you know, we competed hard for the entire game, which is good, but we just got to clean up um, some of our uh, young mistakes that we were making at this point in the season. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we got the highlights playing here from the game. Uh, thanks to Gary Smith here for uh, working the hard hours here, getting those highlights from the game. I mean, Talk, talk about, I think, one player that really stood out from this game was Phil Alexander. I mean, a guy that hasn't been on the court, there he is uh, hitting a three there. Uh, a guy that hasn't seen the court in over a year, obviously he registered last year. He scored a career high 19 points and he was five of five of seven from range. Played great, uh, offensively especially. He uh, was very aggressive and I like when Phil's aggressive because I think he really can score the basketball. He has the ability to shoot the ball, obviously making five threes, but he's quick and he's hard to keep in front. So uh, he brings that to the table as well. And then when he gets in the lane, he usually makes the right basketball decision, finding his teammates. So he got off to a great start and you could just see his confidence grow as the game did. It was a little frustrating on night two because he picked up fouls and he was only able to play 11 minutes because he was battled foul trouble the entire game. But he was a big spark for us uh, in the opener against Bowie and did a really nice job. Yeah, definitely. There's uh, Brent Pegram hitting a three there. Obviously, you know, we always expect big games out of him from the guard position. Uh, you know, pace the team with 20, 24 points. You expect him, you know, shoot a little better from the field, uh, you know, 7 of 18, but, you know, hit, hit his free throws there at the end. But, you know, a guy that shot pretty well most of the game, wouldn't you say? Yeah, he shot the ball extremely well in the first half. Uh, he made a lot of threes in the first half. I think he only made one in the second half. You know, Brent is, is an explosive player. We really need Brent. Uh, to be uh, more of a facilitator this year than he was last year. He's going to get a lot of opportunities to score the ball, but when he makes plays and gets our guys easy baskets, it, it, we're at our best. Uh, he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot and he's going to make good decisions. He just has to continue to work on making the right decisions when he gets in the lane, whether he's dropping it off or he's pulling it up. He's got to you know, realize what the defense is giving him and he's got to make the uh, right decisions, which I think as the season goes on, he'll get better with that. and. Uh, He'll be, uh, he'll be really, really tough. He's a great two-way player for us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you talk about a game where it was pretty back and forth most of the way. Uh, as we saw, Phil and Brent had a very good first half, 25 combined points. And then you're slowly chipping away at the lead there in the second half. As you said, you know, we're in a position to win the game. Brent makes it, I believe, what a two-point game there with just a few seconds left. Bowie inbounds the ball. Uh, you know, about half court, but Brent's right there to pick up the ball. And yeah, it's quite a contested three to try to win the game. Yeah, you know, we had a chance. Uh, Boo did a good job. They fouled us when we had a chance, the possession before when we were coming down with a chance to tie it. Uh, they fouled us. Brent made the foul shots. We had to foul them again. So they were up three. They fouled us. Uh, Brent made both foul shots, and there was 3.5 seconds, and we're in our press, and they throw the ball right to us. And uh, Brent takes two dribbles and has a shot that he can make. Uh, very difficult shot, but it's a shot that he can make. It just doesn't go, and we end up losing that game. But uh, our kids, you know, we battled hard that night. Um, we did. It wasn't an easy game for us. Things didn't come easy. We just kept working and plugging, plugging away. And like I said, when you have an opportunity at the end of the game to win the game, um, you're in the game. Mm -hmm, definitely. I mean, another bright spot I think you could talk about that game was uh, Baba coming off the bench there for you. I mean, you know, college debut, obviously a lot of jitters, but he gives you 10 points. He gives you 23 minutes, gives you three assists, and, you know, gives you six rebounds. 
Yeah, he was solid. I mean, Bob has been uh, really good. Like I mentioned last week, uh, you know, he's a couple weeks behind because he had a concussion, but he's really starting to get into it. He gives us the ability to score in some different ways. He can finish around the rim. He's got a really good mid-range game. He can put the ball on the floor. If he's open, he'll knock down a three. He's going to continue to get better. Um, but the six rebounds is big. We need him to rebound for us. Uh, and his energy and ability to block shots really helps us. He gave us great minutes on Friday night. Yeah, definitely. I mean, a lot to take away from a game. You're talking about a team that we talked about last week uh, in Bowie State that was returning uh, combined 10 seniors and juniors, so a very experienced roster. Uh, you know, playing mostly seniors in that game. Obviously, they had a lot of opportunities to get guys off the bench that have played in college games before. I believe they scored 44 points off the bench. So, you know, quite a rotation to deal with. You know, we're playing, you know, close to, you know, eight to nine guys, you know, we're trying to, you know, factor in. But obviously, you know, talking about a lot of youth when we talked about 10 income, uh, 10 uh, freshmen, you know, but the team that, team that we knew what to expect, I think, in Bowie, you know, you said they shot a high percentage. I think it was 53.4% and, you know, wanted to work the ball inside on you. And, you know, I think... What would you say, you know, you stress in practice now when you face a team that wants to work it inside? Well, we knew they wanted to get inside. They're going to get it in on everybody they play. That's a strength of theirs. You know, we wanted to double. Uh, we got to be a little bit better with our, our double teams and rotating out of the pass out. But uh, I thought we did a pretty good job. Uh, the guys that uh, you think are going to hurt, hurt you, we didn't allow. Um, and, uh, they, you know, they had 25 points off of a player from the bench. Smith, I think it was, had 25 points and played big for him. And uh, he took some tough shots. He had a three when we were playing zone. That was probably about 28, 29 feet out. So, uh, you know, uh, they're going to take shots like that. I'm okay with that. I think we're usually going to win if they're taking those difficult shots. But they just happen to make enough plays to win that game against us. Yeah, definitely a battle there. Like we said, a two-point loss, 86-84. Uh, you know, an in-region team that, you know, has in – aspirations to make it to the NCAA tournament this year. Obviously picked heavy in the uh, preseason CIAA poll. So, Coach, let's move on now. Let's talk about day two here. We went against Charleston, obviously picked second in the MEC, another very tough team, you know, a team that you're very familiar with. That You come in there, it ends up being a 72-71 loss, comes right down to the end there. Uh, strong game, again, from Brent Pegram, 16 points. You know, got to the line, a place maybe he struggled a little bit more than he wanted to last year, but made 9-10 to 10 and, you know, across the board covered every stat yeah I thought uh, in the second half we played very very well uh, Charleston last year led the country in offensive field goal percentage and we held them to 41 percent from the field so I was really happy with our defense we need to defend the three better because I think they were 41 or 42 percent from the three but uh, we did a pretty good job we got beat on the glass and again we got beat on turnovers uh, and again uh, you know it is what it is but uh, we felt like if we do take care of the ball a little bit better in both games. We win both of those games, and they're two good teams. And uh, to see our young guys compete against them is good, uh, but we're not in it for moral victories this year. We want to win the games that we have a chance to win, and we let you know two games slip away. So we got to get back to the drawing board. Charleston uh, runs a lot of good stuff. They're hard to guard, but, I mean, we held them. If you would have told me, you know, the night before the game, if they're going to shoot 41% from the field, I would say, man, we're going to win that game. And uh, we had our chance to win the game, and it came down to the last play, and they made a play, and we didn't, so they won the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're seeing the highlights here from the game. Uh, you know, another, you know, as we talked about Baba and, and against Bowie, but another strong performance from another freshman here in Luke House, who uh, had a season high 14 points, and, he, you know, you really asked a lot for him in that game, playing all 40 minutes. Played really well. Luke did. Uh, offensively, he really stretches the floor. He's a really good screener. He, he, he's, he's very good offensively and played well defensively. Uh, he's uh, going to continue to get better. Yeah, he hit some tough shots. He's going to make the, the three a little bit more, I think, uh, as we continue to move on and his confidence grows. But he's an important part of what we're trying to get done this year with him and Baba. And uh, Tim Smith played really well. He had 29 minutes in that game. And I think he was four for four from the line and one for one from the field. I think our bench was perfect from the field uh, uh, Saturday night against Charleston. Uh, so we got some productive uh, minutes off of our bench, and we're going to need that from those guys this year. We've talked with them all year long about we can't have them be freshmen this year. They're going to have to act like sophomores, and thus far they've gotten off to a good start. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you talk, you're talking about how well the team shot. I mean, 51.2% from the field, you know, a great game from from the offense. Also, you know, did very well from the line making 72.4% uh, and, you know, scored a lot of points, 22 points off turnovers in that game. Another strong game from Zion Collins. He comes in there, does great, uh, scores 14 points, four rebounds, two assists. And 
I mean, we'll talk about it briefly here. We, you know, down 13 points in the second half. Obviously not a very strong, you know, we talked about you had a strong second half. Your team battles back from 13 down with, seven, with 17 minutes left in the second half. And then we end up tying the game with about two minutes left on a three-point play by Zion Collins. And then the team goes on a 6-0 run, grabs the lead, and then we're now they go to the line. We missed two sh free throws with 16 seconds left, uh, up by, I believe, three it was. And then they make one at the line. It comes down to one play at the end. What would you say happened there? Yeah, you know, we just got to understand time and score a little bit better. Uh, you know, when you're up by two and uh, there's uh, 9.8 seconds left, there's no need to shoot the basketball. We've got to understand that, realize that, at worst, make them foul us. Uh, and I don't know if they'd have had enough time to do that. And it's just an experience. You know, we gotta, we got to work on some end-of-game situations a little bit, and we've got to make sure we make the right decisions uh, there. It was a tough way to, to lose because the kid makes a great block, but then uh, the kid takes three dribbles and makes an unbelievable three at the buzzer to win the game, um, you know, and didn't score in the second half. Uh, who's their leading scorer but did a really good job. I thought the last 17 minutes of the game we played uh, very, very well. And then I guess you could say the last eight seconds, we need to clean up uh, to get the win. And if we do clean up, we do get the win. So we'll work on that and we'll, we'll learn from it. It's a tough lesson to learn because we had the game won, but uh, I don't think we'll make that same mistake again. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Coach, we're talking about a young team here, you know, early in the season. I think everybody comes in with a lot of confidence going into any season, you know, thinking, you know, we have aspirations to win a lot of games, make the postseason, stuff like that. How do you talk to your team after a loss like that in terms of, you know, it's only two, we're only two games in the year. It's a long season. You know, we got to, you know, get back in the gym, practice harder, study our film and, you know, keep working. All those things you say are so true. You know, uh, two games aren't going to make your season. You can't allow them to break your season as well. You know, you have to come back to work, which we did today. We had a very good practice, so I was happy with that. And, and that's the key. You have to continue to work. It's a grind, uh, the college season. And having 10 freshmen on the team, um, you've got to teach them. You've got to talk about that with them on a regular basis. Your older players, though we don't have uh, many seniors, we have one senior, but they've got to talk to those guys about that so they understand, um, you know, uh, we got to be ready to play Wednesday. We can't do anything about Bowie. We can't do anything about Charleston. We think we could have won those games, but we can't go back in time and get those wins. All of our focus moving forward starting today in practice was all about getting ready for Salem. And that's where our mindset is. I think our guys are in a good place. We had good energy today in practice, and we have to continue to work and clean up the things that we need to clean up. And if we do that, we're going to be a hard team to beat this year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you come into this year, you take a lot of positives away from the first two games, you know. You're right there, combined three points and two losses, you know. So it's, you know, you see the team, it's, you know, they're ready to win games. They're in position to win games. So a lot to build off. Like Coach said, we're going to clean up the little things and, you know, they're just going to get back at it here on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to take a quick break on the Danny Sancombe Show. We'll come back. We'll talk about the uh, PSAC basketball standings, view the upcoming schedule, and we'll preview the Salem game here on Wednesday. We'll be right back. Colin, what's wrong, man? I just don't know how my family back home in Millersburg, Pennsylvania can watch our stuff down here. Well, they could follow us on Twitter, or they could like us on Facebook. Yeah, but what about our sports? How can they watch those? They can watch it live on our YouTube channel. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Welcome back into the Danny Sankum Show. We just got done looking back uh, at the weekend against Bowie State and Charleston. And now we're just going to take a quick look in at the PSAC West standings after a pretty busy weekend in the conference. As uh, we saw IUP in action, Slippery Rock going out to Fairmont to play. And, you know, we'll pop up the standings here. Obviously, Edinburgh as well playing. As we can look, I mean, uh, Slippery Rock team playing out without uh, Micah Till to start the season, but what a game from uh, Will Robinson Jr. I mean, he's going to be your PSAC West Athlete of the Week this week. And they went one and one, and you know they snuck out a win against Notre Dame College uh, at, uh, when they were in Fairmont, a uh, game-winning shot as well. So, you know, good good win for them. You know, they end up losing to Fairmont on night two, but you know, solid from them. Uh, UPJ 
plays a, you know, Pitt Johnson plays a, a tough Concord team, gets a loss there, but ends up picking up another one. And then you have IEP there picking up a game against Wesleyan uh, and uh, Concord as well. And then on, we'll take a quick look at the East standings here, uh, just to take a quick look in. And uh, you see Westchester at 2 0, Lock Haven at 1 0. You know, a couple teams split in there at the end, but, you know, our PSAC East favorites, East Stroud, just take away a team that's going to be very strong this year. It goes 0 2, but they lose to an NCAA tournament team from last year in, in uh, uh, Virginia State, who played them very tough, I believe. You know, the game didn't get over 70 points. I, I think I wrote it down here 63 49 was the final there. But East Stroudsburg, another you know, team here. We looked at ourselves. Obviously, we're at the bottom after losing, but East Stroud, another tough team. Can't take a lot away from the first weekend here. It's only the beginning. Uh, we're going to begin in the conference play just in a couple weeks here, but still a couple of non conference games to go. And uh, we just keep moving forward. Uh, Coach, let's talk about the upcoming schedule here as the team is back in action on Wednesday against Salem. Uh, th this is going to be the home opener for the team. CUTV here, WCAL in action here as well. Uh, you know, describe to the fans what they can see from your team here coming into this season and then, you know, how, how excited you are to be back at the Convocation Center. Well, first, you know, we want to get as much support out as possible on Wednesday. So please come out and support. I think they're going to see a team that plays extremely hard, you know, works hard on defense, um, moves the basketball, shares the ball well, has the ability to shoot the ball, has some guys that can drive and finish. I think it's an exciting brand of basketball. So hopefully we can get the uh, Convocation Center rocking and uh, get a good crowd in there and, uh, we can play off the, the, some of the energy of our fans and get a good showing. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to be back with uh, basketball here on Cal's campus. Uh, talk about a big game also for the women's team before Danny plays against Virginia Young and a, 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 a NCAA tournament team from last year. Strong weekend from the women's team, but, you know, two games, huge games to see the team in action, you know, back at home. As we discussed, I said uh, in the last episode, Danny's team is on the road the entire month of December, so only a few chances to see this team in action here in the month of Dece uh, November. Uh, back in action. So let's talk about Salem here, uh, do a little game preview. Uh, they haven't played this season, so it's hard to really take a whole lot away from a team that we haven't seen hit the court. We don't know who, who's going to be on the court yet. 17-9 uh, and nine last season, so a, a strong season from that team. Cal's holds a 6-1 and one record against Salem over since 2007. Played them twice in 2017. Both picked up wins there. Uh, Coach, they're playing Wesleyan tonight at 7 p.m. As we talked on the way over here, you're going to be watching. Yeah, we'll be glued to the computer screen for sure to watch that game uh, because they, they haven't played anybody. They have a new coach. They have a lot of new faces on their roster, uh, though the you know head coach was the assistant coach there last year, so there could be some similarities in how they play, but they could play totally different as well. So I tried to connect, obviously, with uh, West Virginia Westland's coach to get a little bit of information. Uh, they didn't have a lot on them either because they couldn't find who they scrimmaged and they have such a new roster. So uh, tonight will be a, a good uh, – give us an idea of what they're going to do and what we need to do to win the game. Yeah, I mean, I looked at their roster online as well, trying to get a little view on them. Uh, definitely, a, you know, kind of giving me a, a Bowie State vibe in terms of seniors and juniors on this team, 11 combined, so some experience there as well. Uh, a team that liked to score the ball a lot last year. Obviously, Coach said we don't know a whole lot about them, but a team that, you know, wanted to get out there and transition, score a lot, 85.8 points per game, shot the three very well. Uh, they are looking to replace their best player in Malik Toppin, who isn't back this season. Uh, he graduated. He was a great player. I mean, a guy that I watched, I think, in 2017, this guy was a double-double machine almost every night for a kid that wasn't overly the tallest kid, but he grinded and just kept scoring, getting baskets, everything he could do. I mean, watching him twice play our team, he was a heck of a player. So a huge, uh, you know, guy to replace there. But a team that, you know, also gave up a lot of points, turned it over a lot. So, you know, there's, a, there's definitely a lot that's going to be available after tonight on the team. Right, Coach? Yeah, I think after tonight we'll have a good idea of what they want to do. I think that's the main thing now with new, you know, a lot of new players. They do have a lot of seniors, but they have a lot of guys that transferred in as one-year players too. So um, I don't know how their continuity is going to be, but we'll have a good idea of who does what and what we need to do to slow them down and hopefully what we can do to maybe get some baskets against them as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we look at a junior there and uh, Sean Christian, who's back, a kid uh, who played only 13 games last year, ended up not playing after the semester break, so don't know the whole story there, but a kid that averaged 15.2 points per game, three and a half rebounds, and played about 30 minutes a game. So definitely a kid to keep your eye out for. He's a guard, six foot. He's got to give you a lot there. We're going to just turn and look at the upcoming schedule one more time here. So, you know, wish we could talk a little bit more about a team, but Salem obviously hasn't played yet. So we're going to take a look at the upcoming schedule one more time here. Cal is back in action November 13th against Salem. Uh, CUTV in action, WCAL, 
Then you're traveling out to Elkin, uh, Davis and Elkins, playing Lock Haven and Mansfield in a pair of uh, conference games, then heading out to Glenville State to play an old assistant coach uh, from Cal, and then going to Shippensburg as well. So, like I said, look at the schedule here. Three out of the next four are at home for this team. They're ready to go. You know, we saw what the potential is of this team moving forward, and we're ready to to move on, move on to Salem. The coach said, you know, strong practice here, and we're going to move forward. 7.30 in action, WCAL, CUTV. Come out and support the team at the Convocation Center, and we'll be ready to go. And that's going to be it for our edition here on the Danny Sankum Show. I'd like to thank Coach again for coming in today after a tough night of practice, a tough afternoon of practice, he, you know, and, and his busy schedule. And we'll see you on Wednesday with Coach and the team back in action against Salem, 7.30 p.m. Y'all have a great day.